Hey everyone, welcome. All right, so today we are going to talk about how to get your words down and your book written. I am Amanda Schaffner, I am your host, and I am a sentence wrangler and wielder of words, which is just a fancy way of saying I am an editor and an author. I am the sworn enemy of writing frustrations, and I'm an advocate of one space between sentences. If you would, please hashtag your takeaways with hashtag least revision. Uh, shout out, introduce yourself, say hi. You can tweet me at AM Schaffner with your questions, although I have a feeling that most of the responses will be writing is a mental game. Which brings me to this before I get started. The most important points to take away from this webinar, if you take away nothing at all, take away these. One, writing is a mental game. And two, you are your own worst enemy. No matter how much advice is given to you, it's ultimately up to you to put it into practice and to beat yourself at your own mental game. Keep that in mind. Okay, first up is making a commitment to writing. First, you need to be realistic about your time constraints. If you work full time, don't expect to write two to three thousand words every day. It's just not going to happen. Or that's all you're going to be doing. If you're newer to writing or you don't write on a regular basis, it's going to take you longer to write. Just because writing is a skill, it's a habit. The more you write, the faster you'll get. Don't compare yourself to someone who has more writing time or who writes faster. Comparison is comparison is your your enemy. Um, there are people who can write a lot of words in a day, in an hour, whatever, and you will not be able to compete with them, and that's okay. It's not about what everyone else is doing, it's about what you're doing. Be realistic about how much time you actually have to devote to writing. Learn to recognize your excuses. The thing about excuses is that, is that we usually see them as real and valid reasons why we can't write. So it's not an excuse, it's a real thing, but it's really not. We're too busy, we don't have any good ideas, we don't know if we can do it, you know, the time isn't right, you can do it tomorrow because you have these million things to do today, and so on. Basically, if you tell yourself, I'd write today or at this moment, but, and then you fill in the blank, that's an excuse. So what are you telling yourself? Learn to recognize your excuse for not writing. Seek out other writers for accountability. Being accountable to someone is a great way to force yourself to stick with your writing. It adds an element of um, pressure to the whole process because suddenly it's not just you writing. You have to be accountable to someone else and you have to say, yes, I did accomplish what I set out to accomplish or no, I did not. So you can seek out one person, you can seek out a group, or you can seek out a community. It's basically whatever you feel most comfortable with. Each has its own benefits. With one person, you can, you have a little bit more of a partner in crime feel, and you can bounce ideas off each other. If you have a group, you have a more of a variety of people to talk to. I'm part of a writer's accountability group and we meet every week and we discuss our goals. 
or you can join a community. And with the community, you know, think something like NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, and all those people are writing at the same time and being part of that community is motivating because you know everyone else is going through the exact same thing that you're going through. You're not alone. And really, when it comes to making a commitment to writing, it all comes down to sitting down in the chair and actually writing. This is the most difficult part of writing, is just sitting down and doing it. Once you know your excuses, you have to learn how to counter them. This is where you, the mental games you play with yourself happen. Okay? You have to make writing a priority. You have to do it. So even if it means digging deep into your schedule to find free time or giving something else up, you have to find time. You have to make it something you want to do. Put aside your fears and doubts. We all have them. Motivate yourself. You know, how badly do you really want to write? If it's something that you want to do, do it. You gotta sit down in the chair and write. Another thing that's important is to set writing goals. The first thing here is to know what kind of goals motivate you. If you get easily discouraged when you don't reach your goals, don't set something unrealistic and unreachable. If you're working full time and you don't have a lot of free time when you're at home, don't expect to write 3,000 words every day. It's not going to happen. If you don't know what a realistic goal is, Keep experimenting with how much you can write and with different goals. You're not locked into any one goal and if something's too much, you can lower it. If you keep meeting your goal easily every day, go ahead and raise it. And if you need to reach, give yourself a goal that requires you to really reach for it. <laughs> um, if you're not sure whether you need something realistic or something that requires you to just keep going for, try setting two separate goals. One goal is your bare minimum, so this is the absolute minimum that you can write and be happy with and then send, set a top, this would be awesome goal. And that's one that basically would be awesome if you met. That's more of a reaching goal. Um, and then once you have both of those, see which one is more motivating. For me, on a normal day or a normal week, I usually stop after reaching the bare minimum goal so I know I usually need a goal that requires me to push myself a little. Then you want to break it down into manageable chunks. Write a book is incredibly vague and even write 50,000 words is, isn't good enough. You need to break it down into what you can accomplish in a week or even in a single day. Write 30 minutes every day or write 500 words every day is easier to track and also to map your progress. You can check off wrote 500 words today every day and then at the end of the week you will have more words than you had when you started, right? And But if you start, I'm going to write 50,000 words and you only write 500 words, it doesn't seem like you've accomplished as much as you actually have. And when you're trying to write, it's important to celebrate the small wins. So breaking it down into manageable chunks, keeping it small, 
every day, that's where you're going to succeed because you're going to be able to see the progress and you're going to be able to keep going. And really, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to finish. So if your goal is to write 250 words every day or write 15 minutes every day, maybe just write an hour every week, it doesn't matter as long as you finish. Finishing is the end goal, not how fast you do it. And breaking it down into manageable chunks will help you get to the end. And again, find a way to hold yourself accountable. Writing is an incredibly lonely activity and it's easy to get caught up in all your doubts, your fears, your excuses. And so when you bring someone else into that, sometimes they're the necessary kick you need to get out of a negative mindset and to actually get writing. So I'm totally going to push the accountabil accountability aspect. When you set a goal and you communicate your goal either by telling people or posting on your blog, you're more likely to find yourself sticking to your goals. I've tracked my writing goals on my blog and I, I've also, I also have the accountability group that meets every week and I find my blog doesn't have quite as much accountability for me so even though I'm posting publicly about my goals, I can still kind of write it off if I don't quite reach my goal. But when I meet with my group every week, then I definitely want to say, yes, I accomplished my goals. And sometimes when I really don't want to write, it's knowing that I have to talk to people about what I accomplished the next week that's the only thing that makes me write in that moment. Even events like NaNoWriMo can keep you accountable. Just knowing that everyone else is going through the exact same experience that you are. It's rather uplifting. Alright, the next thing is to recognize what works and also what doesn't work. So I can't do this often means I don't know what works for me and I actually wrote a whole post about this which I have if you're on my website or if you are watching later on YouTube I will have this link. But the, the short version is this. When I was participating in NaNoWriMo last November I was ready to give up. It was like two days in, I was ready to give up, I was done, I'm like, I can't do this, I'm not going to be a writer, this is terrible, you know, I was sure that I, not only that I couldn't write a book, but that I'd never do it. But what my I can't do this really meant was that I wasn't doing what worked for me, and in this case, I was planning beforehand and it engaged my perfectionist tendencies and I was getting frustrated because what I was writing wasn't matching what was in my head. So once I said no planning and I just started off with an idea and ran with it, that's what it took to get the words out. So I can't do this means I don't know what works for me. There's always more than one way to write. There's no one right way. So when you say, I can't do this, ask yourself why you can't, why it's not working. That will help you dig a little bit deeper and perhaps find what is going to work. The other thing is to discover your procrastination techniques. I find that procrastination is usually the first sign that something isn't going right. For me, that means I find myself on social media or I'm rewriting the same sentence. Maybe you find yourself pick, picking up a book to read or watching TV. 
or basically doing anything but writing. When you find yourself procrastinating, that means there's something that's not right about whatever you're doing. Your approach to writing isn't working. And, you know, it could be the time of the day that you're working. It could be how you're writing. It could be where you are in your mental headspace. You have to figure it out, but you're but procrastinating will tell you that something's not quite right. So once you know that something isn't working, whether you're procrastinating or you're just frustrated because you feel like you can't accomplish anything, that's when you need to start experimenting and make sure that you're not settling into one routine. Oftentimes we struggle with writing because what we've always done no longer works. Every book is going to be different and as we evolve as writers so will what works for us. And that's where having a group of writers is incredibly helpful because you can learn from them. Everyone writes a little bit differently and that's kind of where the experimentation comes in. You can learn from them. I learned from my group, I have two writers who like to write their blurb before they um, write their stories and I was kind of like, that's a good idea. And so I started doing it for the book I'm going to write for Camp Nano in April and I was so excited about it that I ended up writing a blurb for each story idea that I had and it really got me excited about writing where I had kind of not been as excited as I probably could have so be open to trying new things and don't settle into one routine keep learning keep trying you never know what works for you until you try it All right, when it comes to just to putting it into practice, you just got to do it. It sounds stupid simple, but it's primarily just getting yourself in the chair and writing. That is the biggest hurdle in writing. So the biggest things here really is to learn what your excuses are and how to counter them. This is where your mental games will come in and you have to be stronger than your doubts. If you say, I'm too busy, you have to counter it with, well, I just marathoned, you know, two hours of this show. So clearly I'm not doing too much. So you have to counter them. You have to learn how to work through your frustrations. When you find yourself saying, I can't do this, or you find yourself on social media and not writing, if you find yourself struggling with perfectionism, you have to learn how to work through that. Because once you work through those frustrations, you will actually write. And perhaps most importantly, seek out ways to hold yourself accountable. Write with other people. Bring other people into your writing process. Ask people for advice. Ask people for encouragement or motivation. You need people. And on that note, I want to introduce the Writing Sidekick which is a community of writers that I created. Right now it's running with Camp Nano in April, so very soon. And what it is, is a Google Plus community. There, we already have people, we're already talking about what we're writing and how we're preparing. And I send out motivational messages every week to keep you writing, 
and then there will be discussion going on in the group and I'm doing these for each nano this year which is April, July, and November. You can still sign up. There should be a link below the video and all that's left is to get yourself in the chair and write and if you join us at the Writing Sidekick we will help you do that.